This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial, and in this lesson, I want to talk about color, but not necessarily in a way that you might think. What I'd like to talk about in this lesson is getting in and adjusting the interface that you're working in. Maybe you want to get in and you don't necessarily like the background color of a bin. Maybe you find it hard on your eyes and there's a color that might work a little bit better for you to have your clips over top of. So I'd like to talk about getting in and having the flexibility and how to get in and adjust the colors of not only the bin backgrounds, but also your timeline background, as well as the clips that are in your timeline, how you can get in and color code those. Maybe they, you know, you have a camera angle that you always want to be a specific color or a specific type of shot that you'd always like to be a specific color, and you'd like to have that reflected in the timeline. Well, in this lesson, we're gonna go through how to set up all of these different, not only necessarily views, but clip parameters to not only have your timelines looking very colorful, but also having them nice and organized as well. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there, and let's start out talking about how to change the background colors of the project window, a bin that you're working with, and the timeline, because they're all done not necessarily in one place, but it's one place plus an additional place for any bins that you currently have open. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate to our settings and we're going to come down to the interface setting. Now there's a couple things in here that we can adjust to really tailor these bins how we want. Now this is a great thing to be able to get into adjust, especially if you have difficulty seeing with specific colors or if you just find it easier and more relaxing on your eyes to see things with a different color, this is where we're going to get in and make these adjustments. Now there's a couple places in here that we're going to want to do that. To get in and adjust the background of the timeline, we're gonna come and activate the Use Custom Timeline Background parameter, and we can now get in and choose a color. You'll see we have a lot of different colors to choose from. Let's just choose something sort of in the pink wheelhouse right about there. Now next, the project window. Right below that, Use Custom Project Background. Again, we can click on the color. You'll see that we have a little bit less choice this time, but that's okay. Let's just choose a relaxing purple as our background color. And last but certainly not least, inside the interface window, we can also allow for custom bin backgrounds. Now the default background color for new bins, we can select if we want to, or what we can do is as we create new bins, we can give them colors as we go. So this is really one of those, it's an up to you type of thing, how you like to work for me. I like to set the color after the bin has already been created. Because I'm gonna be changing the color anyways, I don't really care what the default color is, but if you wanted to have the default color for new bin set to be a specific color, I'll just leave it as green for now. You can now say apply. Now, as soon as I do, you're gonna notice two of the windows change colors, the timeline and the project window. Now, the reason that this bin didn't change color was because the parameter is set for the default background color for new bins, not for bins that are already open. So if I was to say apply and say okay, and come in to create a new bin, that bin will have that new background color. Now, how do we get in and change the background of bins that we already have open? What we're going to do is navigate down to the fast menu, and I'm simply gonna select set background color. And let's just pick, I'll just pick yellow as the background color just because you know it's a color that we didn't have selected. And we now have the background color of yellow. And again, we could get in and set these as we go, which in most cases, like I said, chances are you'll be organizing this based on you know the type of clips that are in the bin or something like that. So you're gonna wanna get in and alter them each time. That's why I don't necessarily care what I have the default background color set to. 
Now there is another parameter that we can get in and adjust in the interface. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn everything back to the way it was. Let's come back to our settings. Let's come back to interface, not import. We wanna to come to interface. There we go. And I'm just going to turn off the custom timeline background as well as the custom project and the the, the default uh, background color for new bins. We'll turn all those off. I'm just gonna say apply. Now, of course, the yellow is still there because that was a custom one that we had set up. But what I wanna do is, actually, you know what? Let me just set this back to be the standard color here. Let's come to our set background color. We'll just set it to be none perfect. And what I wanna do is I actually wanna select one clip because there's situations where when you're creating custom bin background colors or timeline background colors, in this case, it would be a bin background color that you wanna get in and alter the selection color that you have in the bin because maybe that color doesn't necessarily go with a blue color in your bin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to the interface setting and right at the top, we can actually choose the highlight color as well. So if that blue color is not working for what you have going on, we can just say, well, maybe we'll make it a green color. And you'll notice that not only is that going to change the colors of the actual selection, but it's also going to change buttons that come along with that. Let me show you what I mean. I'm simply gonna say apply, and I'm gonna say okay. And you'll notice that it immediately switched to those colors that I had selected and then turned them off because I didn't have them turned on. And now take a look at the colors. Not only is the selection green, but you'll see that any button that is activated turns that green color as well. Okay, so that's how we can get in and customize our bins, our project, and our timeline backgrounds. But now how do we get in and customize the actual color of clips in our timeline? Well, there's a couple ways that we can do this as well. Let's throw some clips into a timeline here, and I'm just gonna grab some at random. We'll just drop this in. Now what I'm also going to do here is I'm just gonna set that interface selection color back to be the default color, the highlight color there. Let's just say apply, there we go, perfect. Okay, good. And again, we're just gonna select a few shots at random here. And it's not gonna let me, there we go actually. If you bring that clip down and it's not gonna let you create a new layer, if you wiggle it a little bit, it'll create that new layer for you, perfect. Okay, let's come in here. I don't need another basketball shot here. Let's see, what do I got in here? Let me just come down, uh, saxophone player. There we go, this is a good shot. Again, I'm gonna drag it down. You'll notice that it appears right over top of the clip in V2. If you just wiggle it a little bit, you'll get it to create a new video track. And let's do one more, okay? Uh, let's pick Let's pick this one here. Okay, again, just wiggle it a bit. There we go, perfect. Okay, so we now have our different shots on different layers. Now, if you wanted to get in and you wanted to create a color for a specific track, now we're not talking about a clip color, we're talking about a track color. What we're going to do is to select the track that we wanna change the color for. We're gonna come down to the fast menu. I'm gonna come up to track color, and now we can choose the color of the track that we want this to be. Let's just choose green for this track. Let's do the same thing for V2. I'm just gonna pick them quickly here. Let's just go this one and we'll go track color. We'll just come over here for that one and one last one here, okay? Now what's important to keep in mind is that as I'm doing this, if I had another clip that I wanted to put onto, let's just say video track number four, we'll take this clip. As soon as I drag it and drop it and let go, that clip is going to be the color of the track that it is on. So let me just take this, I'll just drag it down to this track here. There we go, you'll see it changes color. But what if we wanted to get in and we wanted to assign specific colors to specific clips so that no matter what track they go on, they're going to retain that color? Well, here's how we're going to do this. What we're going to want to do first of all is I'm just going to turn the color on these tracks off, okay? And there we go, it's looking good. And what I would like to do is I want to assign a color to each one of these clips that appear in the timeline. This is a two-step process. The first thing we have to do is to activate this feature inside of the timeline. To do that, we're gonna come back to the Fast menu and I'm gonna come to the Clip Color option. And what we wanna make sure is that the Source option is turned on. By default, it is turned off. I'm going to say OK now. Now the next thing that's important to keep in mind is that I actually have it set up correctly right now, but in most cases when I'm working in my clips view, I don't have that color column down the left-hand side, and that column is essential to our workflow for getting the clips to, re to retain that color no matter what layer they're on. So I could just come to my bin view that has my color column, 
Or if you don't have it, no problem. You can simply come to the Fast menu, then you can come up to Choose Column, and you will find the color option right here towards the top. I'm just going to say OK because I already have it here. Now, with that Source option turned on in Clip Color in our Fast Menu's Clip Color option right here again, all I now need to do is I'm going to match frame the clip that's on Video Track 1, and as soon as I come in and I assign a color to it, let's just assign purple, the clip's going to immediately change in the timeline. Let's just do the same thing with our other layers here. We'll just select this one, and we're just going to go down the line here. Let's go red, same thing here. Let's go orange, and last but certainly not least, let's go with yellow. Now, of course, what's important to keep in mind is that this is not a track-based adjustment that we've made. It's a clip-based adjustment. So this way what we can do is we can now come all the way down, drop this clip onto video layer three, and you'll notice that it retains the color. So this is a fantastic way if you wanted all of your B-roll to be a specific color so you could easily see it in your timeline. You could get in and no matter where that B-roll sits inside of your timeline, you're always going to be able to identify it right away because you'll be able to recognize it by its color. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.